Remember that 15 knots we had the other day when Charles was fixing the light at the top of the mast? Well, that's only gotten worse. It is blowing a consistent 20 knots now, which is what we cruisers like to call a blow because, well, it's blowing constantly. This particular blow is supposed to last for the next 48 hours. So we're gonna leave our nice cozy anchorage over here at Meeks Patch and go over to Spanish Wells to explore the city and see what they have to offer over the next 48 hours. We're about to round the tip of Meeks Patch and right now the water is protected from the northeast wind that we have. As soon as we round the tip, we're gonna to get to see what the anchorage conditions near the Spanish Wells Channel are gonna be. Fingers crossed that it's reasonably flat. Ow! Ah! Ah! Oh. Wear shoes! Um. Ah. I wish I could tell you what I just did, but I have no idea! I tripped on something, but there's nothing in the way. Holy moly! This is a great spot to anchor because we're close enough to the land that it's providing some wind break, but it's definitely providing a break on the swell, which means it'll be nice and smooth while we're on the boat. And it'll also be a nice, comfortable dinghy ride into the channel. It didn't look that shallow. This one has a sign that says no dinging. Not showing you guys that. I don't always drive the dinghy, but when I do, I typically uh, take the wrong route and run it and run as a little bit of ground. And um, is that all I did wrong? Yeah. Oh. And nothing. I only did one thing wrong today. So. <laughs> This dog is right on the road and most people drive around in golf carts, but that person was in a legit car. It's got a pretty nice seawall all along this downtown area. And it's great. They have it set up so that you can just pull right up and tie your dinghy on. Pretty much any place in town you want to go, there's a dinghy parking space right next to it. So the first thing to know about Spanish Wells is that it's not really like anywhere else in the Bahamas. It reminds me a lot of like a Beaufort, North Carolina, or maybe even like a New England fishing village, which means it has a robust marine ecosystem. Spanish Wells is primarily a fishing village, which is why it reminds me so much of those other places. It's the closest point in the Bahamas to the open Atlantic. And the majority of the village is built up around the fishing industries. So it's definitely a working village. Everywhere else in the Bahamas is somewhere that's built for cruisers, whereas Spanish Wells is definitely somewhere the cruisers go. So before we have any fun, first things first, we're gonna stop by the hardware store or the marine store, see if we can't get anything to help with that anchor light situation. That's fine. I mean, what's so fun about that? <laughs> Well, there goes that plan. Um, 
do this to ourselves all the time. Saturday, I had no clue what day it was, but it's Saturday and they close at noon and they're closed tomorrow. So, just have fun. So, uh, instead of, you know, fixing our broken anchor light, <laughs> I think we are going to walk around town and see what is open and, you know. Take a good along. but if my head was not screwed on, it would be lost. I have lost everything in the last couple of days. <sighs> Anyways, thought it was still there. Is that it? No. Well, how much further? Half a kilometer, till we turn. <laughs> What's a kilometer? I don't know, dear, that's just what Google told me. <sighs> It's on the other side of the island anyway, so uh, we have to turn and then... Oh yeah, we're, we failed to mention, we're taking you guys somewhere. I hope it's open. Oh, we never checked that. Shit. No, Google says it's open. Oh, okay. Google's never, ever wrong. No, never. Speed limit signs in miles per hour. That's well, true. Why is Google in kilos? I don't know. So this is not where we're taking you, but I'm getting a little hangry, so I'm gonna stop in for a snack. Looks like they have sushi. It's one of those days. These guys are open, but they're really busy, so it's gonna be like 45 minutes before we can get food, and that totally defeats the purpose. Okay, so hanger uh, on? Hanger on. Not gonna lie, my toe is feeling a little jealous of all these golf carts flying around. Yeah, we could rent one, but walking is so much cheaper. That's, that's where we're going. We're almost there. The space shop is literally in someone's garage. It's run totally out of their house and out of their garage, and that's really cool. All right, so you've, if you've been with us for a while, you know that we haven't had too much luck fishing. So I wanted to come here because these are the experts on a fishing village. We've got new lure for mahi, new lure for tuna. Let's see what happens. There's a common misconception that Spanish Wells is a dry island. That's because it used to be, but progress or change happens everywhere. And this is no longer a dry island. In fact, I feel like they have more bars and restaurants packed in this little space than most islands do. I don't know if that's a fair statement to say, but I'll, what I will say is they have lots of bars and lots of restaurants and they're all very good. Oh man, I thought, thought I was hungry before when I did not get a snack. I'm definitely hungry now and I am super excited. This place used to operate 100% out of this bus. They have expanded over time and now they have a full restaurant in the back, but I mean, it's so cool. Who has a restaurant? Well, now everyone has a restaurant and a bus, but that didn't used to be the case. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so hungry. I could eat all of this. But then I would fall asleep here and you would have to carry me home and it'd be a big old mess. They have corn fritters, so we have to get those. Because A, they're amazing, and B, it's like traditional Bahamian food. You just have to have it. Corn fritter. So good. They're perfect. 
That might be the best sweet potato fry I've ever had. Bold statement. Let me try. No, that's damn good. How is this possible? I don't know. I had hiccups and then Chick Charles turned the camera on and I swear they're gone. <laughs> okay, so new remedy. Turn the camera on yourself. This is amazing. That little toy is the only toy that she really likes playing with. And we call it her squid because it bears some resemblance, I suppose, to a squid, but she just loves it. It's the only thing she'll chase, has no interest in balls or frisbees, nothing, just squid. As far as days go where you're stuck somewhere because the wind is blowing, this is one of the best ones we've had. A lot of times you're in a place that's just protected from the winds, but there's not really anything to do, which is fine. You can find lots of ways to entertain yourself on your boat. But today, today was perfect. Such a cool place to walk around and experience. It's just a really fun environment to be a part of. And to end it here on this beach with the dogs, it's just perfect. I, I couldn't ask for a better end to a day. All right. Oh, why did we not bring a headlamp? Weren't thinking. Oh, I just want to stay. I don't think we can beat this home. Well, we can try. All right, we made it home, but the clouds are not cooperating. There's not much of a sunset tonight. Toes aren't supposed to bend that way. See that little fork? Ow. I'm pretty sure it's broken, but there's nothing really like you can do about it anyways. And I mean, it hurts to walk on, but what are you gonna do? I don't know. So I'm gonna slap a Band-Aid on it and uh, we're gonna go. Now, this morning was supposed to start completely differently. We were supposed to be out and basically done with our errands by now, but I got sucked into editing videos and Instagrams and Charles made water and cleaned a little bit of the house and washed the deck and yeah, you know, boat life. So we are running behind as always, but barely anything's open in town anyways today. So it's not really gonna matter what time we get started. So let's go. We have a real first aid kit. Don't worry. This is just for fun stuff like broken toes. Ow. Get in the boat. <laughs> save the camera, save yourself. Did it land on the dog? I call it a land. I'm good. <laughs> Charles just fell into the boat. I'm so upset I had the camera off, but there is a whole flip in a land. <sighs> this is this is the disaster of getting in the dinghy. It, Dogs. It's, yeah, it's the dog. They're just terribly complicated and worthless, really. Oh, shh. 
Really? Yeah. Well, it's the toe. I lost balance. I tried to shove off. Okay. Put it down there. Try to stay dry. So we are going to go and pick up a couple of groceries because we don't know where we're going tomorrow, but we know we're not going to stay here in Spanish Wells anymore. So we're going to go load up on fresh provisions and then take the dogs to the beach because, you know, what dog doesn't like a little beach time? And then we'll just see what we can get up to on a sleepy day in Spanish Wells. Uh-oh, guys. This does not look promising. I'm not sure how many times two people can learn one lesson or be taught the same lesson and not learn it, I guess is more what I'm thinking. But grocery store is closed on Sunday. Everything seems to be closed on Sunday. And as I recall from most places in the Bahamas, everything is open on Saturday and Sunday, but most places are closed on Monday and Tuesday. And when I think about Spanish Wells and the way that its industry works, it makes perfect sense that it wouldn't follow the same normal business hours as the rest of the islands because it's not normal. Most of the other islands are focused on tourism and those cruise ships coming in and vacations and stuff like that. So Friday and Saturday and Sunday are major days, but here it's just a normal working village. So of course you're gonna have Saturday and Sunday off and especially a town like Spanish Wells because of its deep religious roots. It makes perfect sense. I just wish I had thought of it earlier. Oh my gosh, I can see the beach water from here and it is insanely pretty. Holy moly, and there's a sandbar! I thought we missed it because of the time of day and how late we're running, but there's a sandbar. So we're on the north side of the island right now and it has this amazingly miles long picturesque beach with this huge sandbar. And at low tide, you can actually walk without going in the water from the beach over to the sandbar. We're about mid tide right now, so it's kind of an, an island sandbar. Show me your swimming radar. There's nowhere near the water. <laughs> Current is a little strong for them without their life jackets on, and we didn't think to bring them. So that's the uh, benefit of having a six pound dog. You can see a cloud coming in right there. As soon as that cloud goes away the water will be back to bright blue. It's incredible that it's so clear that you can see the changes in the water fly through with the clouds. So radar just basically trip lined us while we were trying to film and that's why most of our dog, our most of our vlogs don't include the dogs. They are adorable, and we spend a ton of time with them when we're not filming. They make filming incredibly, incredibly difficult. So this is their last excursion for the day, but they both look pretty tired. So I'd say we did a good job. Assuming it's not already caught in the prop, so I have to go fish it out. Okay, so tugging on it, and it's not it's coming. See, painter intact, which some the gods were smiling down on me because it definitely made it all the way back there. It's a different kind of sandbar.
Local hot sauce. Always love good local hot sauce. That is the combo. Two frozen goombays, which are definitely the way to go for goombays. Some good food later. We have a two mile upwind, upswell dinghy ride, and it is going to take a minute. Thanks for hanging out for the last 48 hours with us in Spanish Wells. We have an early morning, or an early start to tomorrow morning, so we're gonna go watch a movie and see you guys next week.